Welcome to Beyond the Horizon podcast, a show all about the Horizon ecosystem and the exciting world of blockchain and Web3. Join us as we explore the latest happenings in this rapidly evolving space and discover new horizons together. Now let's go Beyond the Horizon. Hello. Today, we are excited to welcome Roscoe, founder of Revoke.cash. They'll be bringing their protocol over to Eon, and we're excited to learn more about what they're building. Before we get into that, would it be possible to introduce yourself to the community? Yeah. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. So I'm Roscoe. I'm based in Amsterdam, and I've been working um, full-time in crypto since about 2018. And in the past years, I've I've worked for a few different companies in the crypto space. Um, and then sort of in, in 2019, I started revoke.cash more as like a, a side project. Crypto was a lot smaller than it is today. Um, but then over the sort of the years that followed um, with with the growth of crypto, uh, revoke.cash also grew a lot. So that kind of morphed into... Um, much more than just a side project. Uh, and that's that's sort of where we're at right now. Amazing. Thank you so much. And just to kind of dive in, can you please tell us a bit more about Revoke.cash, kind of the services you provide to the Web3 industry and kind of what sets you apart from other projects in the space? Yeah. Um, so as I said, back in 2019, I started Revoke.cash um, and... DeFi and just crypto was a lot smaller than it is today. Um, but we were already seeing sort of the start of DeFi. Um, so there were some early decentralized exchanges, um, like uh, the first version of Uniswap, um, DAI, Maker. Um, a few of those things existed. Um, and one thing, one concept in um, in DeFi and in, in sort of uh, most smart contract applications is the concept of token approvals. Um, and what that means is that essentially you give uh, some smart contract or you give someone access to your tokens, essentially. And, and that is a, a sort of an, an integral part of... Um, of the functioning of these smart contracts uh, and and intuitively i like to use the example of you know if you have an nft and you want to sell that nft then you'll have to give the marketplace access to your nfts in order to sell it um if if the marketplace doesn't have access to your to your nfts then they can't sell the nfts on your behalf um but where this can get problematic is that most uh, smart contracts, most applications ask for unlimited approvals. So that means, you know, if you have um, 10 board apes in your wallet and you want to sell one of them, you're still giving access to all 10 of them at the same time. And these approvals, they persist even after you're already sort of done with the action uh, uh, for which you needed it. Um, and so what was kind of needed, um, it was a, a way to manage those approvals, make sure that, uh, you know, after you don't need them anymore, after you're done using uh, the marketplaces, for example, to sell your NFTs, um, you can revoke the access uh, that these applications have on your wallet. Um, yeah, so that's, that's in, in, in 2019, I launched the first version, which was a very, very simple um app just made in, in a week and um yeah over the years uh, that that grew and nowadays um so for about one and a half years now um it's uh it's like about one and a half years ago it turned from a side project to just my full-time job uh and it's, it's it's grown more since then as well and um uh and and the product has expanded as well so now there's also uh, some other things like a browser extension that um, basically can help you uh, help give you warnings when you may be about to do some harmful things. Like we know that in crypto, there's a lot of scams going on. There's a lot of people trying to steal your money. 
Um, and so what the revoke browser extension does is it, it gives you uh, sort of a little pop-up before uh, or like, yeah, when when a website asks your wallet to sign something that might be um, harmful. And um, yeah, so that's uh, both both those projects, uh, both, both those products work with uh, Eon now, uh, as well as a bunch of other um, EVM based blockchains. And um, yeah, hopefully it can help keep the crypto community safe. I thank you for the uh, <clears throat> the odd shout out there, of course. Um, but uh, what because I know when I've I've used Revoke Cash a couple of times, a hundred percent, I was like part of the crowd that was just minting off of contracts. Everything I found when <laughs> NFTs were just blowing up and new and new. No matter what you bought, it seemed like it was going to go up. Um, so admittedly, I definitely connected to a few port contracts. Um, I haven't used it in quite a while, which is a good thing, I guess. Um, so yeah, as far as like the products that you're making now, it's not just browser based anymore. It sounds like awesome that you have the browser extension there. It's what do you have like upcoming? Is there anything else on the roadmap here? Could we possibly expect, you know, some wallet integrations in the future? Um, or at this time, are you really just trying to cover all the chains? Because I, I know when I first used it, there might have been like three or four on them. Um, and I know you have a ton now. Um, so yeah, maybe if maybe a little more into the roadmap coming up, if you can share. Um, but additionally, like how many how many chains are you covering right now? Yeah, so yeah, like you said, um, so it, it started off in 2019 with just Ethereum. And um, yeah, it kind of slowly grew chain by chain. Um, and, and sort of, I think we are now at a stage in crypto where, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, chains and a lot of them are, are here to stay. Um, so I think it's, it's good to help users stay safe, like across all of the chains they're using. Um, so right now we support over 60 different, uh, networks. Um, so that that includes basically all of the all of the big ones um, like you know Ethereum, Polygon, but also a lot of smaller ones um, or or chains that are just starting out. Um, and yeah, so about the the roadmap. So yeah, definitely, um, we try to stay on top of of new networks, um, make sure that those new networks um, get supported as soon as possible. Um, but luckily, uh, with the setup we have right now, um, it's often, uh, reasonably easy to support new chains, um, which definitely helps. Um, so that's not the, the, the biggest, the biggest thing right now. Um, I think one of the big things that I want to push in the coming, in the coming time is helping people get more insight in sort of their approvals and like what it means. Because right now, if you log into um, revoke.cash uh, with your wallet, you will probably see like a, 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 a pretty big list of, of approvals that you have, like access that you have given to different smart contracts, different applications. But sometimes it can be hard to understand what that means. Like, is that risky? Why is it risky? Um, maybe it's these aren't that risky. Um, so, um, the past, last month we launched um, the uh, uh, value at risk uh, metrics. So now we're also displaying sort of the um, US dollar value of the tokens in your wallet and sort of how much of that value is at risk by having these approvals, um, which can help sort of understanding which approvals yeah, carry the most risk and should probably be revoked um, sooner rather than later. Um, but that's just sort of the start of of what we can do to provide that insight. So I think one of the next things that we want to explore is um, more like risk scoring. Um, so if you have 20 different approvals, we kind of want to give you insight and, okay, these are higher risk because of reasons X, Y, and Z. Um, and these ones are maybe a bit lower risk, uh, because of these other reasons. Um, so basically, yeah, like helping people understand what they should actually be doing rather than just giving them the overview and, and leaving them to it. 
that at <clears throat> that at risk metric that's pretty cool um yeah making people aware of that because sure it's in your wallet but it might not be soon <laughs> all right brian i'll let you get back on script here sorry <clears throat> no no this this was great uh thank you both so much um you know this kind of covers all the interview questions that we really had i guess kind of one of the last ones i'll ask is you know what's the best way for our community to keep up with revoke.cash you know what platforms to follow you guys on keep up with news and you know we're really excited to have you here on eon and thank you so much for for joining yeah thanks again for having me um so i think the main um the main platforms we use for um for communications are twitter and and our discord channel um i think the best way to uh to access those is um through the footer in our website um uh so that's uh, the 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 twitter handles revoke cash and um there's also a discord invite link there and generally um all the big sort of announcements go on both channels um and on the discord we're also able to offer any support um you know in case you maybe got your funds stolen you got scammed or or hacked even um we have some people in the in the discord that that are always able to sort of diagnose how that happens uh, sort of give you some next steps on how to properly protect your your wallet going forward um and yeah just uh that's uh so yeah I, I would definitely just recommend joining the discord for sure um and following twitter and then i've got just one last question um we we've really just been talking about end user here, but if there is anyone from a pseudo launch chain or from an already launched chain that might be looking to get integration support from Revoke Get Cash, what do you what are you typically looking for uh, to make that happen? Are there certain tech requirements to that? Do they have to be an EVM in addition? Um, are you are you typically getting grant funds? I guess would be a pretty solid question as well. Right now, the the main way uh, Revoke gets revenue is through grants, um, and so one one um, one thing of that is is you know chains that that we support uh, might want to offer some grant funding uh, in order for us to to properly support their chain, um, but also there's platforms like Gitcoin grants that we use uh, where individual users uh, come together and and um, help. Uh, help uh, donate to our to our project, um, and so yeah. If you are um, a a chain or you're launching a chain um, uh, soon, there's a few different ways we can support your chain. So the um, easiest is if you have a um, uh, or well, they're actually all all uh, reasonably easy. But one one way is if you have a, a block explorer that's based on um, either scan or block scout, um, those two uh, block explorers and and a lot of a lot of blockchains do have that, so that's that's uh, good for us. You can also um, get uh, support uh, or have support from uh, Covalent, which is an API and infrastructure provider. If you're included in their platform, then you can also um, now we can also support you, or you have to have some really good performing node software. Um, and usually, this is hard for um, chains to have, uh, just because of the, the the infrastructure requirements of these nodes. So I think one of the first two options, uh, especially having a block scout based explorer, is probably the easiest way for us to support the chains. Very cool. Uh, it's nice to uh, nice to put a face to the name officially. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming on. <clears throat> yeah, thanks for having me. It's uh, cool. Uh, yeah, also cool to put a face to the name, and uh, nice to talk to you guys. Awesome. Thank you both so much for your time today. We we, we uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Beyond the Horizon. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes as we continue to discover the limitless potential of the Horizon ecosystem. If you liked this episode, make sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time.